Capricorn, this is your week ahead astrology forecast by Astrology Motivation from Born Without Boundaries. We're going to cover the major planetary aspects and transits and how they impact your natal sun for the week of May 24th to May 30th, 2023. Now, you don't have to know exactly the position of your natal sun. All you need to enjoy this video is your birth date, but it is a lot more accurate if you know the exact location. So the exact degree on which the sun sat when you were born. And the way to find that out is to get a natal chart. Like I said, you don't need to go get your natal chart right now if you don't already have it, but it is easy to do when you're ready. And it's a great place to start your just journey into astrology. It's for free. Basically, you can go on any any website or I'm sorry, any search engine and just search free natal chart. And there's a bunch of websites that do it. You'll need your birth date, which you already have, your birth time and your birth location. And in a couple of seconds, it spits out your whole birth chart for you. But I will be giving the correlating birth dates. So that's all you really need to know for this reading. We're going to start with the really big stuff, those things that everybody should be aware of for this week. Um, and then we're going to whittle that down to specifically the stuff that Capricorns in particular should focus on, but all Capricorns. And then I'll break that down into the decans. A decan is a group of uh, 10 degrees and each zodiac sign is a total of 30 degrees. So each zodiac sign has three decans in it. And the reason why they break it into the 10 degree group is because it's 10 degrees that in astrology really make the difference between an aspect forming or not forming. An aspect is an angle. All of astrology is based on geometry. So an aspect is an angle, an angle that creates a relationship between two planetary bodies in the sky. And if it's within a 10 degree radius of that aspect, it's still it's still creating the energy of that aspect. So we break it into 10 degrees instead of five or instead of 15 for that reason. So there's three decans in Capricorn. And if your natal sun is located between zero and nine degrees Capricorn, you are a Capricorn one because you're in the first decan of Capricorn. Your sun is in the first decan, uh, decan of Capricorn. If your natal sun falls between 20, uh, 10 and 19 degrees, you are in the second decan of Capricorn and if your natal sun it falls between 20 and 29 degrees you are in the third decan of Capricorn and you'll see during the reading if this is the first time you're watching that it makes a big difference as to the impact that you'll be experiencing we're going from the position of the natal sun because essentially the sun affects everything in your life it it it'll touch on every every aspect um if if not directly but it, then in comparison so it's a it's a good place to start for a weekly astrology forecast so Let's talk about the big stuff. We just went through big stuff because we had a new moon, our new moon in Taurus last week. Um, there were a lot of transits the week before. Right now, we don't have any major transits, but we do have a perfect storm in the sky right now. And we're going to talk about that. It's the aspects that are forming between Pluto, Mars, and Jupiter and the South Node. <clears throat> The South Node, of course, is not a planetary body or a, lum a luminary like the Sun or the Moon. The South Node is just a mark in the sky or a point in the sky. So why does that impact us? Well, for astrology, in astrology, the South Node marks your beginning, the beginning of your soul's entry into this life experience that you're having now. And the North Node is the other side of that path. So it is a life path. It is a life path journey. Um, so we look at the south node in general, where the south node is now. It might not be the south node in your chart, but this, once again, is general, what's impacting everybody. So overall, the south node and north node are now reflecting where society is headed. So the south node and north node is, the south node is in Scorpio and the north node is in Taurus. The north node is now conjunct to Jupiter and Jupiter and the North Node are square to Pluto and square to Mars. This is a very, 
I would say at the very least a dynamic position, if not a very difficult position for it to be in. Um, of course, the south node is right directly across, so Jupiter is conjunct the north node in opposition to the south node. The south and north node are always in opposition to each other because they're two sides of the same path, essentially. So one's here, one's there, always opposite, right? Um, but when a planet like Jupiter is conjunct the North Node, this exacerbates the tension of that North Node, of the impulse to move forward and to make some <clears throat> pretty dynamic changes because Jupiter's all about dynamic uh, dynamics. It's all about expansion and growth and differences and incorporating different things. So that really exacerbates that sort of North Node almost gravity, if you will, and the fact that Jupiter is square to Pluto and it's square to Mars at the same time means there's just almost a relentlessness about it that could go almost ruthless. It's an intense energy to say the least. It doesn't have to be bad, but the changes that are going to make, be made now, this is almost like we're not taking it anymore. The changes are going to happen and we're going to unearth some uncomfortable stuff since Pluto is involved and Pluto is in retrograde. And in retrograde, Pluto's always very investigative. It's always what's, what lies beneath. Now, Pluto and Mars are opposite. So if you kind of see the, the, the shapes that I'm making, there's a grand cross in the sky. This is an absolute impasse. This is, this is a reflection of a dynamic. It's like almost like the universe has discovered that there is this dynamic in our society that needs to be broken in order to be fixed because without it, without, without that complete breakdown, and if you can kind of think of Pluto like the tower card in tarot, it's gonna break it. It's gonna get things done. And this is the kind of almost ruthlessness that the universe seems to need right now because it's built that tension to not take any bullshit. So we're in a time right now um, where <clears throat> that's, just, that's just sort of impacting society at large. And there's gonna be some major changes that are dynamic and we're not gonna come back from because we're not supposed to. We're supposed to be headed toward the North Node, this new form, this newness, this new version of our communities and um, our world, the way people live on Earth. So there is a lot of tension in the sky right now. And since Mercury just came out of retrograde last week, um, and we're just gonna start to feel this week it actually moving forward and, and things starting to work correctly. Um, it, it, I wouldn't be surprised if last week was a total shit show for you. Um, but right now that is really um, going to be the, the major, major tension that's happening right now with Mars involved it's very physical it's impacting our physical world it's impacting our physical selves it's impacting this physical dynamic and and there could be some permanent changes to our 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 just our actual physical world um I don't want to get into into politics or anything like that. That's that's not what I'm here to discuss with you. All that I, I want you to know is that's what's going on in the sky right now. So if you're interested in astrology, know that that kind of tension is happening right now. And whatever changes are made at this time, they will not be unmade. They will mark um, where we're going to have to move forward from because we're not moving back. That's why Jupiter is sitting on that north node, right? That sense of we're not moving back. We're not, we're not coming back from this. We're only moving forward. That's that relentless energy, which could be very good, right? It could be, it could actually be great for you, but I just wanted to make you aware that that's the energy that we're falling under right now. So let's go transition now into Capricorn. And I always tell every Zodiac sign to watch your ruling dignitary, to know where it is and understand what's acting upon it because those en energies are things that you will pick up on. So Saturn is, of course, in Pisces and will be for the next three years. But Saturn also has a lot of dynamic things happening to it. Saturn is your ruling dignitary. It doesn't move often, which is why, you know, Capricorns aren't known for changing very quickly or being happy with changes. Um, even though Capricorn is a cardinal sign, you have a very, you usually have a very fixed mentality of I like to know what's going on and what's happening and I like to plan things out. So 
Uh, this is Saturn. Saturn is your ruler. Saturn goes by the rules and wants things made by the rules, right? And if you're going to change things, Saturn doesn't just change things randomly. Saturn makes new rules. It throws away the old ones. It finds out the reasons why the old rules aren't working, and then it makes new ones. That's how it moves. So it's a long-term process. Um, so it's important to, that, that you know the aspects that are impacting Saturn. So the aspects that are impacting Saturn this week. Now, long-term aspects are the nodes. Saturn is actually impacting the nodes too. It's not just Pluto is square to the nodes, but Saturn is sextile to the north node and square to the south node, which means Saturn is very much in harmony with, which means these are legal changes. <laughs> these are definite um, restructuring of our 3D world kind of changes that are going on here in Saturn's rules, laws, authority figures. They're on board with it at this point, at least at least where Saturn is in position now. And compare that to Pluto, which is at a dynamic square, this sense of something is being done with, being being done away with, and newness wants to come in. This week, by the by the 26th of this week, Saturn is going to be sextile to Mercury. For you guys, that's a very effectual and a very productive energy because it will help you to think clearly and to think effectively. It will sort of volumize your own sense of how to use your wisdom, how to use your knowledge. It will also allow you to communicate very effectively in ways that people will take you very seriously. So if you're taking a test or you're going out for a job or any kind of important conversation that you need to have or email that you need to send, this would be a great time to it between um, from the 26th on. Very great, good time for you. Um, all week long, Saturn is going to be uh, says a square to Venus which means there can be some frustrations in power dynamics or control dynamics when it comes to your relationships. This isn't a long-term transit and neither is the Mercury one, but just know that your, your home life, your personal life with your any romantic relationships, this might be strained and uh, for this next week, but in terms of your professional abilities or your ability to communicate effectively, this will be very, very, this will be very, very good for you. Um, just an FYI. Just an FYI, um, aesthetically speaking, it's not a great time to change your look. So if you're going to that interview, go, this is an example. If you're going to the interview, you'll be able to communicate to yourself effectively, communicate yourself effectively, efficiently. Um, but, but wear that suit that you know looks good on you. Don't try to go off the rails there because anytime there's tension with Venus, it could just be, I don't know, kind of weird. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Sorry about that. Just an FYI. So let's get into the decan so you know how this energy is actually going to impact you. If you are decan one, so your natal sun is between zero and nine degrees Capricorn, uh, your birthdays are basically December Capricorn, somewhere between the 22nd of December and the 30th, 31st of December, you guys are uh, decan one. Um, now the 31st might go into decan two. I think it depends on the year and that's why it's most um, accurate to have the actual the actual degree your sun sits on. But like I said, there's a, about this, uh, those are a, about the estimates of the dates. So long-term transit are the uh, says a uh, uh, sextile to Uranus, the square to Neptune, and the sextile to Saturn. So square to Neptune can be very challenging energy because it can be, it just sort of long-term can make you more distractible. Um, I think Capricorns are usually good with navigating this, but just be aware of it. Another long-term uh, transit is the uh, sextile to Uranus, which can bring up confusing things, just like curveballs. Like, why is this stuff happening just always at the wrong time? That kind of energy, these two transits, I'm sorry, these two aspects last a couple of years. You've already been experiencing them, so you're probably already navigating them very well. But this week in particular, let's look at that sextile to Saturn, which is very, very good for you. Sextile to Saturn means people will take you seriously. It means you will be the authority figure. It means that there are opportunities that will come, especially when it comes to your work. So this is a nice longer term. And this, what I mean by longer term for Saturn, the sextile to Saturn is that for the next year, this could be great for your <clears throat> career <clears throat> for the next month 
your your natal suns are also trying to Jupiter which means exceptionally good for your career this is a fantastic time because it's along with that sextile to Saturn to move forward make those changes abroad and expand have a lot of opportunities coming um, when it comes especially to your career or any situation where you really want to be taken seriously and you want to make long-term commitments to things this is it this is a great time um, there is a um, there is a, a um, I'm sorry um, there is a quincunx to Mars right now that won't last long it'll last maybe another week between Mars and your natal Sun which just means that you shouldn't be impulsive when it comes to your physicality it could mean that you're sort of more pop-offish and more argumentative which could also exacerbate Saturn's position with Venus right now um, so it's it's a little bit just note that you could be a little bit more hot-headed but also when it's it's you going after things and and pursuing things you're a little bit more relentless when you do so this could also be used for good for in a good ways as well just an FYI but please do watch um, especially physical damages or physical injury to yourself you are a little bit more prone because you're more impulsive under any kind of kind of dissonant aspect to Mars so just be aware not be beware but be aware I'm not pushing yourself too hard when it comes to those things. Okay, let's go to Capricorn 2. So Capricorn 2, um, and we do have some sort of bridging between Capricorn 2 and Capricorn 3 right now, um, which I will explain to you. But Capricorn 2s, usually your birthdays are between, say, the 31st and the 9th or the 1st and the 10th of January. So it could go to the 31st of December, but it's definitely that week, first week, week and a half of January is Capricorn 2s. Um, your natal sun's long-term or in that square to Chiron, which means that it, it could just be compromising a lot about how you feel about your own self-worth. Um, so if your self-esteem has been compromised, if you find yourself in therapy, that's why. And it's a great time to work on all of those old injuries. Chiron is in Aries, so it could also be physical injuries starting to come up and hurt you or ache you. Ache, again, the reason is they need to be fixed, they need to be addressed, and they need to be healed. Just an FYI. That's a long-term transit. Then we have a long-term transit because Uranus has moved this is what I'm talking about. So Uranus is now, I think, at 20, or by the end of this week, will be at 20 degrees Taurus, which means it's right between, it's right on that cusp be between the second and third decan. So those of you who are being affected most are those of you with birthdays on the 10th or 11th of January. Um, your natal suns are trying to Uranus. This means that you will be wanting to step out of your comfort zone. This is the perfect time to do it. You will be inspired to be interested in new things, be be almost in some ways repulsed by the same old same old and this is a very exploratory and ingenuitive time for you let it happen it could bring many opportunities that you hadn't you hadn't even thought of before um now this week in particular your natal suns are trying to mercury that is a very nice and helpful energy it is a great time for you to You'll, communi you'll be communicating very, very well. There could be communications coming into you that help actually solve issues or problems in your life and balance out issues that you were having. Communications might finally come through for you, thank God, especially after that retrograde, right? The sense of communications that you wanted might actually come through. And then um, also you'll be very eloquent in speech. You'll be able to uh, articulate yourself or communicate appropriately. So it is a great time to, try, I mean, try and it's not, when your natal sun is trying to mercury it's a great time if you have to take any tests if you have to write any papers if you have to write any propositions if you have to present anything all of this is a wonderful time to do it this week if you have any interviews scheduled they will go very very well you you'll be very proud of yourself afterward um let's go into capricorn threes now we've already discussed those of you between the 10th and 11th will especially be feeling that trying with uranus for the next god like months, couple of months, because Uranus doesn't move very fast. Um, but the 10th and 11th, at least for the next month, will be feeling that trine. So um, Capricorn 3s, your natal suns are somewhere between um, the, the 10th 
and the 21st of of uh january yeah in and around there so that that's the estimate but it's around there um your nato sons are trying to uranus right now or they they will be getting the intensity will will come more and more intense like i said if your birthdays are the 10th or 11th maybe even the 12th you'll already start to feel this trine um long-term transit for all of you is a conjunction to pluto especially those of you who are at the cusp the cusp can't the, the capricorn aquarius cusp is where pluto is planted right now at zero degrees aquarius so you guys are absolutely still going through major life changes whether for better or worse they are permanent changes when pluto is involved it is a metamorphosis change like a cocoon you don't change back from these so this is these are why it's rough it's permanent change like i said it doesn't have to be bad but that's what you will be experiencing and you'll be experiencing it for the next couple of years <clears throat> ask your capricorn friends who were born earlier in the season they will tell you there's been a lot of dynamic changes in their lives already it happened over the past couple of years Another long-term transit is the sextile to Neptune, which means your creativity is extraordinarily high and you will be more creative than I think you've been in a while, like than you maybe you've ever been. So it's a good time to use this energy. This is beautiful energy that, you know, will help you sort of put your dreams to use and and actually start to create things it's a good time to get into the creative arts to be able to channel that energy a little bit better long-term transit um this week your natal suns are square to mars square to the south node square to the north node it's because they're conjunct pluto you will feel this intensity and you will feel the changes in your life accelerating or in some ways stopped up and building tension you'll almost feel that there's going to be an explosion soon enough um this tension will be relieved especially when mars starts to move on into next week but then venus will go and take its place so we have this grand square that you guys are going to be feeling for quite some time um right now dynamic changes to your energy levels dynamic changes to how you use your energy where you place your energy and maybe even your physical selves um square to jupiter is in intensity it's relentlessness this sense of i'm gonna go for it i'm gonna do it i'm gonna make these changes because i i want these changes and i've sat on this too long so for better or worse there is this dynamic in you right now that says i want these changes i'm done with the past and i want to push forward so um yeah my fingers are crossed for you guys just always in this energy screw your ethics to their sticking place screw your morals to their sticking place because if you defy them, you will not like the outcome of these changes and you'll be stuck with it for a long time. But if you don't and you stick to your morality and you stick to your sense of right and wrong, then you will be actually very, very happy with the results in your life. I love you guys so much. Please do like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And remember, come on over to Born Without Boundaries Tarot where I do a full tarot card reading for Capricorn every single week. I love you guys and I'll see you next week. Bye.